Um, so first of all, for those of you who might not know me, uh, my name is Tara Doyle and a King. I'm the very proud president and CEO of the Puyallup Sumner Chamber of Commerce. And as a champion of commerce, many of you know, we protect, advocate, and support policies that are friendly towards businesses. It is important to us to provide you opportunities to hear from your policymakers and future policymakers about such issues. With that, we have invited Sumner and Puyallup City Council candidates to a conversation to share their platform, reason for running, and some insights to the types of issues that are important to them. Once again, I am pleased to welcome my co-facilitator and board director, Luke Corum, who's the general sales manager of our uh, local Bill Corum's Puyallup Nissan, and such a great advocate and supporter of business. So Luke, I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this today. Awesome. Uh, so there are some candidates from uncontested races. So we have invited those uh, that have some work to do to earn your vote, per se. Um, so let's join me in welcoming our candidates. Uh, we will have Puyallup City Council District 2 position 2 candidates, Joe Colombo, can give a wave. Try to make it as <laughs> informal and engaging as possible. Um, we have Dennis King. Hello, Dennis. We have Sumner City Council position one, Mr. Kirk Hartke. Hello. And with Sumner City Council position two, uh, Pat Cole and Barry Walden. Great, our format today um, will be that we'll give each candidate race by race, uh, two minutes to introduce yourself. You can tell the group why you're running and why are you the best candidate for this position. And then next, our facilitator, Luke, will ask each of you some questions. And again, we'll just go race by race. And then at the end, we'll uh, allow you 30 seconds to fill in the gaps, um, take your big swing, do your soapbox pitch, uh, just give us a nice lasting impression. So I hope this is engaging and fun, and uh, I hope we get to know a little bit more about you. So again, thanks for being here. And with that, we shall start with Joe Colombo. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Joe Colombo. And first of all, thank you for holding this forum. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you today. Um, for those that don't know me, I moved to the Puyallup area in the early 80s uh, when my father was transferred to McCord Air Force Base. Uh, and my mom ended up teaching in the Bethel School District. Uh, I graduated from Rogers High School. Uh, I was active in Key Club and the marching band. Uh, in fact, I was at Sparks Stadium the day that it opened. So very fond memories of being down there with all of my friends when they officially opened up the stadium. Uh, now, I am not a business owner myself, but I do understand how companies run. And as someone in project management, I know how to get things done. Uh, I work in the IT department of Liberty Mutual Insurance, and I was a former credit counselor, nonprofit uh, consumer credit counseling services of Seattle. Uh, in fact, I want to bring those skills to the city budget sessions to make sure that we improve fiscal responsibility as we look at funding uh, amenities in the city. Uh, I have three core values I want to share and hope to bring to city council. Uh, those are integrity, transparency, and accountability. Uh, for me, integrity means following the rules, but also working to change what's unfair. Uh, second is transparency. My goal is to stay in touch and share everything I can with you uh, during my campaign and serving on the council. And third is accountability. Uh, I'll keep you informed, seek your feedback, and walk my talk with specific proposals to things that I'm working to develop. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. And we'll have uh, Dennis King introduce himself next, and then we'll, we'll ask both of you the questions. Hi there, everybody. My name is Dennis King. Uh, thank you so much for hosting this forum today. Uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you and uh, such a great time to, to speak with uh, everybody from the chamber. Um, as you know, I have a big, a big background in, in business here locally in the community. Um, I grew up here. Uh, my family's been part of this um, community for over 50 years. Uh, my wife and I, we own and operate Skate Tiffany's and King Family Fund Center 
in downtown Puyallup, and I'm also a real estate agent. Um, I've also been involved in the community uh, through our local Puyallup Kiwanis Club. I served as a club president for two years, as well as been on the Kiwanis Foundation board, giving back throughout the community, uh, through Kiwanis, as well as uh, through our business, uh, through many different avenues, such as uh, schools and PTAs and our youth. Um, I want to see a city council that continues, uh, as I've always said, Puyallup style collaboration and consensus building. And we must embrace um, our community and what it stands for. Um, I always support police, fire, and EMS professionals. And uh, I promise that I will never, ever defund our police. Um, with that, our businesses are a big backbone to our community. And we need to continue to support them, especially through these times. Um, I've signed the front of paychecks through the pandemic. I understand the struggles that most businesses uh, in our community and throughout our state have suffered through. And I want to make sure that we continue to give them the resources and attributes that they need in order to come through this um, winning through and through. Um, you know, Puyallup just means so much to my family and I. We've been here a very long time and we wanna make sure that Puyallup stays on the right course for the next generation. Thank you. Excellent, so we'll stay focused here on this race and I will kick it over to you, Luke Corum. Hi, I'm Luke from uh, Bill Corns Beyond Nissan, also on the board here at the chamber. So the first question will be for Joe. Uh, Joe, what is the biggest attraction to work in Puyallup? How do we get our labor shortages fixed here? Love that. Uh, so what is the attraction of, you said, attraction of being here in Puyallup? Uh, I've, wow, I love this city. I think uh, one of the greatest things here is our uh, parks and recreation. I love, I don't know if anybody has had a chance to hike some of our trails, gone to some of our parks in town. They're absolutely amazing. Um, uh, and for those of you that don't know, I am actually working from home a hundred percent. So this is my office is the city of Puyallup. So absolutely love it. Um, you said the second thing is a labor shortage. Well, I think part of that is definitely uh, investing in our communities. We need to show people why uh, Puyallup is a great city, why they want to, first of all, be here, you know, uh, first is relocating some people to the area. Why is Puyallup an attractive place to come? And then second, why is it a worthwhile place to start investing in? Um, from my understanding, Puyallup is the third largest city in Pierce County. We are growing, we are vibrant, we are thriving. Uh, it's, you know, it's a really up, and coming place. And so I think people want to be here, immerse themselves in the community and sort of enjoy what we have to offer. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, is for Dennis. Uh, what part of PLP has the most opportunity to grow economically? How are you working with the state and federal government to make this happen? I apologize, my phone was not on silent. Um, the biggest economic development, I would say through our downtown corridor, we need to bring more affordable housing, more businesses to our downtown corridor that are sustainable, that can provide more jobs, uh, more jobs that are of living wage. And, um, you know, I want to bring affordable real estate to our downtown corridor, be able to allow folks that are in uh, as a, as a first time home buyer or those that are on fixed income, such as seniors or those with disabilities that are paying into a rental system that at an affordable price could use that same rent payment as a monthly mortgage payment and be able to provide their family with generational wealth uh, through real estate and something to be able to retire with. And, uh, and so to be able to focus on businesses in our downtown corridor 
and to provide uh, uh, low taxes to our, our downtown businesses and our citizens is a big deal. Sounds good. And this next question is for Joe, and I'll actually have uh, Dennis answer this once he's finished here, but uh, it has to do with homelessness, which is obviously a hot topic and not just what you would do to fix it because we've heard a million ideas, but uh, as business owners, as community members, how do we know it's getting better? Uh, we're obviously not thumbing through crime rates and things like that every day, but what's, what's some uh, signs that it is getting better and what would you do to fix it? So I'll hand it over to Joe. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, as some of you may already know, uh, there has been a program going on during the pandemic where there's 20 beds uh, at a hotel in the north side of Puyallup, and then we're sending another 10 people to the Salvation Army in Tacoma. Um, and that's been a program uh, that the city has been diligently working on, which has helped remove some of the homeless off the streets. So some of the ways to measure this is definitely uh, just visibility. Are we seeing less homeless people on the streets, in the parks, uh, that sort of thing? Is there a reduction in the uh, encampments? Um, <clears throat> are we seeing less trash? Are we seeing, uh, you're, you're right though, people aren't checking crime stats all the time, but the uh, local police department is heavily engaged uh, with what's going on with the homeless community and we can lean on them and ask them for their expertise too. Hey, are you seeing trends decrease? Uh, what do you recommend that we can do to help this? Um, I think the Puyallup Police Department has done a really good job of what they have been able to do with interacting with the homeless. Um, uh, you know, I've had some conversations with them over this and uh, uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the top things that come to mind when I think about how do we know that there is a reduction in homelessness in the Puyallup area. Thank you. And Dennis? Uh, and, and I'm glad that you brought this up and, and part of what Joe said is, is correct. However, um, we need to do more than what we're doing now. And what I mean by that is by homeless service accountability. Those that provide services within our community need to be held accountable. And it's not, um, you know, a, a death by sword approach. That's not what it is. It's by just simply providing accountability. Nobody wants to see a human being freeze. Nobody wants to see a human being um, dehydrated out in the heat. Nobody wants to see someone sleeping out on a sidewalk. Obviously, we must show empathy and compassion. But if we don't allow these uh, services to prove that they are getting our citizens that are going through hard times up and out of the predicament that they are in, homelessness services should not be a business. It should be held accountable for the services that they provide and to be able to truly get those that are truly in need up and out of the predicament that they are in. It's not helping anybody to have a revolving door of different services without any accountability for the service provider or those that are asking for those services. We must help those people get up and out into a better situation and homeless service accountability is my approach. Thank you. And this, this one too, I'll, I'll start with Dennis on this, then we'll jump back to Joe. But if you were ever to start a business in Pialp, what would it be? Kind of to put your future hat on where, where we're trending. So <laughs> Dennis and Joe, you take it from. Oh man. Uh, I think my wife is watching and she's probably laughing at me right now because I've had many, many, many ideas. But uh, wow, I would say something that is family oriented, something that brings people together. Um, obviously, I lost that. Uh, and so that's that's a. Uh, a mainstay in my heart. Uh, but I would like to see somebody 
if, and if it were me or somebody else, uh, continue to bring family entertainment to our city. Um, but if it was a number two, I would say we need a really, really, really good burger joint. We need a burger joint business in downtown Puyallup. I like it. I agree. And Joe, what, what would you start? I guess you could add a nonprofit organization as well, but it would, if you were ever to start a business in Puyallup, what would it be? I would start a natural foods grocer. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people in the area and something I get told over and over again is I wish we had a Metro market. I wish we had a Trader Joe's. Um, and so there's a huge desire for that type of business in the area. So that's what I would start. Um, I just think people are craving that out here. And if something like that went in, I think it would get a lot of business. I like it. I think we're all looking for those. And last question, uh, Joe, you could start this one. This is probably one of the most important ones. Uh, both of you guys, I don't think have been elected to office, but what one issue would you push for in the next four years as a council member? Just one issue that it's going to stick with you and they've got to get it done. Hand it off to Joe for the answer. All right. Thank you. Uh, infrastructure. Uh, I look around the city uh, and this is near and dear to my heart because I live uh, really, really close to Good Samaritan Hospital. I can see it from my house. And uh, we have roads that not only need repaving, but uh, they need to be reinforced. There's a road near me, uh, 7th, that's being used not only by fire trucks and ambulances, but now fully loaded dump trucks. And that road is getting really torn up. And it's a residential neighborhood and there's kids there. And so that road needs to be fixed. Sidewalks need to be connected. That neighborhood only has partial sidewalks. So when kids are walking up and down the hill, you are this close to traffic. So we need to do some more connecting of sidewalks. I'd also like to see the expansion of trails. I know that uh, the trail that's over by uh, the Safeway near Shaw Road, I've been told by people who uh, bicycle that that is really dicey getting across there uh, when they want to go out and do some recreation. So I would find a safe way to reconnect that. But if it was one issue, I would say infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Love it. Dennis, one issue you'd push for in the next four years that you want, you'd hang your hat on that uh, and be rem remembered by? Yeah, uh, you know, there was uh, a few that uh, go into that. Um, and the real estate uh, affordability uh, is a big deal. But to get there, we need to have uh, a streamlined permit process for everybody that wants to develop here in our city in, in a reasonable and economical way. Um, you know, over the past couple of years under the new management uh, of the city, we've done a much better job. Um, I've gone through that permit process. I think you have too, Luke. And it, it's, a, it's a chore. It, it's been a chore. Uh, but uh, I will say over the past couple of years, it's, it's gotten a little better. And I will tip my hat to the city for that. But in order to have a faster, more reasonable, and to attract uh, businesses like Trader Joe's or Metropolitan Market, we need to have a better streamlined permit process that is um, something that can be sustained and not cost our developers that want to invest in our community longer periods of time that end up costing them more dollars down the road. Um, and so responsible and affordable real estate and a more streamlined process. Those are my two things. If I can bucket those together. Thank you. So that completes my questions for this race. I'll hand it back to Tara to, to have any closing remarks for this one. I'm going to shake it up a little. I think we'll just move on to the next race. And I think just at the very end, we'll do a round robin of closing comments. So you'll get a chance to okay. talk about what you may or may not have missed. So let's go on now to Mr. Kirk Hartke. City of Sumner, position one. Oh, thank you all for having me. I uh, appreciate the, the uh, chamber putting on this forum and uh, appreciate the opportunity to kind of address you all and introduce myself. Um, 
hope for any support. The uh, um, I've been a resident of Sumner since 1985 when my parents moved to uh, I was started elementary school at Maple Lawn Elementary as, as a kindergartner and uh, went all through Sumner schools. Um, graduated from Central Washington University uh, as a when I was in Sumner Junior High, I started in the landscape industry uh, by mowing neighbors' lawns and worked through that in the private sector. Um, the past six years, I've been at Tacoma Public Utilities in the grounds maintenance department, working in the same landscape sector, very similar role, just in a, a public setting. Uh, I've learned a lot about kind of the public aspect, public sector aspects of how things work, the red tape that I think we have to fight through to try to get some things accomplished that are a lot harder uh, in this avenue than in the private sector. Um, and look forward to the opportunity to represent um, a new generation of Sumner Council. Thank you very much. Great, thank you for that. And we'll go ahead and uh, bring Luke back in. Hi, Kirk. Hey. So I'll, I will uh, just go right down the list of the, the questions I was asking the first candidates. So the first question, what is the biggest attraction to work in Sumner? How do we get the labor shortages fixed? Sure. So I, I think one of the biggest attractions of Sumner is the quaintness of our downtown and the, uh, the beauty of the, of the citizenry. I think we have a, a great po population that, that really thrives on uh, a lot of great activities that transpire in Sumner and people really appreciate it. Um, I think the labor shortage issues, I think we're going to, I think that has a lot to do with uh, how people are, have been compensated. Uh, I mean, the, I think the unemployment benefits that, that have extended to, for a while have really held back some of the employment uh it, interest. So I think that that's been, been one, you know, reason why there's not as, as much, uh, unemployment, you know, the, the employment hasn't been moving forward. Thank you. And this next one has to do with city homelessness. So obviously, uh, that's on the topic of lots of people's minds as business owners, community members, uh, Sumner city people, how do we know it's getting better and what would you do to address it? I think that partnering with the, with those that provide resources, I think similar to what uh, Dennis was saying, like essentially those that provide services through the city, the uh, food banks and of various sorts and, and those that go out in the community, we need to partner with those individuals to find out really a, a true headcount of, of, you know, homelessness that's, that's happening in our, in our town. I think there's, you know, we quantify homelessness as, as one entity. Well, there's still varying groups amongst homelessness. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the economically impacted homelessness uh, is a very different group than those affected by mental illness or, or drug addiction. And so uh, I think differentiating those, those groups and being able to analyze where homelessness is can let us know how it's getting better. If those that are economically impacted are, are, uh, you know, finding employment and moving on and, and being able to, to find residents and, you know, long-term residents or, or short-term residents to be able to move on from that. I think that, I think the partners that, that work with the city or within the cities will be able to, you know, answer those questions a lot more for us. So the next question, what part of Sumner has the most opportunity, opportunity to grow economically? I think Sumner has a massive uh, transportation network, I mean, or, or uh, transportation industry. And I think that that same region where we, the north end of Sumner, where we have all our warehouses, has an opportunity to, to build some of the light manufacturing and other sort of industries in. I mean, the, the footprint of those same facilities can operate other, other entities. So I think that the economic growth that could transpire in Sumner I think would be more towards light manufacturing, some sort of other, um, you know, some high, some 
more livable wages than what this the transportation industry transportation industry provides. And then, um, if you ever were to start a business in Sumner today, like I said, putting on your future hat, what would it be? I think, and it's it's probably going to just you know also really appease my mother, but I think it would be some sort of uh, um, senior housing, some uh, uh, that would would be also uh, like a community uh, facility. There's uh, there's a you know I. I'm like the third, I'm the third generation of four that of my family that lives in Sumner right now. And I want to make sure that my family members can stay living in Sumner. So I, I, I would build some form of a condo community slash, uh, uh, long-term care facility that could all, you know, all encompass the, the needs of our aging population and allow them to move into something like that, that would also free up other housing for future generations to move into like my wife and I are, you know, raising our family. So. Like it. And then the last question, what one issue would you push for in the next four years as a council member? Transportation. Our biggest bottleneck, I may, uh, as I moved to the private sector and became a member of Tacoma Public Utilities, I became a teamster. And so I know what it takes driving large trucks around the, you know, and I know what it, I know the headaches of transportation in and out of, of the North end of town transportation that we're having at the 166 interchange of 410. There's, I think that pushing to make sure that our, our city is teaming up with the state and other regional uh, agencies that have, you know, already said that they're going to work with us on, on transportation issues, that they follow through with it. And so I'd like to push for, you know, revamping intersections uh, and pushing to really make sure that our transporti- transportation needs are being met. Thank you. So we'll move on to the, the last race, the position two Sumner city council with Pat Cole and Barry Walden. So uh, Pat, if you want to, uh, start out with your introduction. Thank you. Um, so I'm Pat Cole, and I'm running for position two for the Sumner City Council. I have close to 30 years of experience as a civil servant, and that's in both local and um, state government. I hold a bachelor's degree in public administration and a paralegal certification. So for the last 13 years, I've worked as a finance manager in a human services department and as an office manager for an office that was de- that dealt um, almost exclusively with land use issues. And I really want to serve on the Sumner City Council because I love living in the city of Sumner. Uh, and there are three things that I'd like to accomplish if I were elected to the Sumner City Council. One is enhanced public safety. I support hiring more officers. We need to be um, on top of the upcoming retirements and bring additional officers to Sumner's police force. And that's because the crime data shows that our property crimes are high. And I want residents to feel that when they they work hard for something, that is just not taken away from them by some stranger. Um, In addition, addition, I think officers will really help improve the the police response time. The second um, issue that I'd like to work on is providing public bus transportation throughout the city of Sumner. And I was driving daily to Sumner Station until the pandemic hit. And I know that other, um, I wanted another form of transportation and I'm pretty sure there are, there are other um, citizens in Sumner who would like that as well. And I also know that there are residents who'd like to see less commuter parking in front of their houses. I believe that Sumner should not have pulled out of the Pierce Transit system. So I plan to lead the effort to bring public transportation back to the city of Sumner. And three, increase housing opportunities, especially for seniors. There is a mandate for the city to increase capacity. That is, um, as a, popu- as a um, city grows in population, we are obligated to make sure that there is enough housing to accommodate that growth. So we can't build out, so we need to build up and I'll be advocating for senior apartments. But before we start building senior, um, or any apartment complexes, we need to make sure that we improve our transportation infrastructure. So I have no doubt that I will be an asset to this um, city of Sumner, and I'd like the opportunity to help lead Sumner into a better future. Thanks so much for your time. 
Thank you, Pat. And uh, Barry. Hello. 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 Oh, just, okay. can, can you hear us? Just barely, but it's, it's getting better. Um, I've lived in Sumner for 30 years or more uh, with my family. We've uh, moved here from uh, Maple Valley area back in 1990. Um, I was a deputy sheriff of King County for 25 years. And for five years, I worked for the insurance commissioner's office as a senior investigator. Um, after retiring from those jobs, I uh, got a, a private investigator license and I opened up a private investigation agency. Um, for the most part, I consult with attorneys on uh, computer forensic subject matter involving computer evidence of all different sorts. Um, I'm uh, very pro-public uh, safety. Um, it's the first responsibility of government. Without public safety, nothing else is going to work. People have to feel safe to drive to the store, to uh, just conduct everyday life. If they don't, it, things go south really bad. Um, as far as uh, pushing for something that I'm interested in, I'm, I'm interested in uh, completing the trail, uh, bike trail and walking trail that goes uh, through Sumner and complete the trail going to uh, boarding. Um, As far as housing goes, um, there's a lot of people that are really upset in Sumner about all the plans to uh, have apartment buildings going up by the by the hundreds. They're they're not loving that at all, but I think they don't uh, understand that the Growth Management Act is demanding that uh, the counties tell the cities how much they're going to grow. So. Um, we're compelled to create more houses and, and in doing so the city um, has been pretty smart in the way they're doing that um, there's several different projects that are in the works that are set to start being completed uh, after the first of the year I think um, there's also big projects as far as transportation goes over near the Winco, there's supposed to be some roundabouts going over there. And I think I can be an asset to the city of Sumner because I have the right temperament. I have the right temperament to work with people. I've worked with people of all different sorts. Um, when I first moved to Sumner, uh, let me back a little bit. When you're a police officer or sheriff's deputy, you get to find out where the bad areas are. Those would be areas where you would not move your family to. Yeah. Sumner, when I first saw Sumner, I noticed that everybody mows their lawn. So people are responsibility for taking care of their homes and caring for each other. And I was right. This is really a great place to live. It has been as long as we've lived here. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So let me get started out on a few of these questions. We actually just got a direct message from someone that's uh, watching, and uh, I want to ask her question as well. So I'll uh, start with Pat. Uh, this person, they don't have their name in here, but they want to know any service or volunteer work that you've uh, done in, since you've lived in the city of Sumner. And then we'll bring it back to Barry. But Pat? She needs to hit the button. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I am currently volunteering at the um, Sumner Community Food Bank. 
I spend my Thursday evenings there. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I've met a lot of people as they come in and I'm really, truly enjoying it. So that's the volunteer service I'm doing, but I also am regularly attending the city council meetings. I want to know what's going on within the city. Um, I've had an opportunity to ask questions, you know, uh, at the council meetings themselves. And I continue, I will continue to do that whether I win or lose. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Barry, uh, any volunteer service work you've been involved with since you've lived in Sumner? Well, um, not since I've lived in Sumner. I've had kind of a busy life. I was a uh, reserve officer for uh, King County for almost four years before I was hired on full time. So volunteer police work, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. That is... Uh, quite the service work. And then uh, I'll start back with Pat again. Um, what's the attractions for people to want to work, live in Sumner? Um, and then you kind of go into the how we could fix some of the labor shortages, some ideas that you'd have as a, a city council member. For me, I think the attraction for others would be the same attraction that it was for me. And it is just this great city, this small town feel. Um, I learned about Sumner. My sister actually invited me to the rhubarb days about seven, eight years ago. And I just love Sumner. And I know they have these, you know, these events throughout the city throughout the year. And People love those. I love them. And I know that that's a great attraction to the city of Sumner. So I think Kurt Hartke says something very similar to that. And I totally agree with what he had to say. Um, as far as um, bringing more employment jobs into the city, um, I think it's about just really working on maybe some of the small businesses. A lot of the businesses downtown um, are closed. And once we get through the pandemic, and hopefully that's soon, um, and things start to reopen a little bit, I think that we'll get more employment. So I, I think it's that, plus it's about wages as well. I know the city is currently working on, um, they actually uh, comp just completed a wage study as of November 1st, um, city employees, a good number of city employees will be getting wage increases. So I think we need to focus on that for not only the city um, and its administration, but for the, all the businesses within the city of Sumner. Thank you. And uh, Barry, the same question. Uh, what are the attractions to work and live in Sumner? Uh, and what's some ideas you have for the labor shortages that we're currently having? Um, I, I tend to agree with Pat and uh, Kurt uh, that uh, the pandemic is, is the primary problem with all that, that uh, it's, it's, it's hard for the businesses to open up. It's even harder when they don't have people. Um, I don't know if there's a way that the city council can get more people. Um, there have been uh, some uh, pretty good YouTube videos that uh, hopefully uh, if people see them, they would like to come here and uh, live here and work here. Um, I don't, I don't really have a, a strategy on how to, to do that other than to do some advertising campaign. Next question. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, Pat, this has to do with city homelessness. What do you think the role that uh, the Sumner City Council has in that? And as business owners, how do we know it's getting better? Um, I think it's okay. So let's let me start with the role of the city council. I think the city council is, or, or, or the city itself is working on that. They are in the midst of or currently adopting policies related to transitional housing and emergency housing. There's a mandate to do that, and they are moving forward with doing that. There was a presentation a couple weeks ago at the city council meeting that I heard um, that talks about those policies and where they're going. Um, I don't know. Now, when they actually talked about that at the city council meeting, they talked about the um, point in time count that said that there were nine, that the city of Sumner had 19 homeless that at that, I think it was the 2019 count, there were 19, home, 19 homeless people in the city. I think that there are quite a bit more than that. So I'm not really sure what, why that count was so low. But for me, I actually live in a neighborhood where I'm told that there are a lot of homeless um, individuals along the river. I actually haven't seen them. I see a couple guys along near the Fred Meyer. 
So, um, and that's it. And it's the same people over and over. So I personally have not been able to see how many homeless people we have and that there really are true numbers, but the city is definitely moving in the direction that it should move in order to deal with that as far as housing so that we can help those people. And some of the transitional housing, that's going to help them that will have services within those complexes so that there can that there's an opportunity there to get um, to eliminate some of the homelessness that we see out on the street. And I saw so we are moving in the right direction for sure. Thank you. And uh, Barry, your thoughts on uh, city homelessness and how do we know it's getting better as community members? Well, um, people I've talked to who know and uh, do the statistical work on this uh, say that there's uh, only about 15 people who are actually homeless and uh, living that lifestyle. Um, some of them are mentally ill. Uh, some of them are on drugs. Um, I, I myself see them very seldomly. There's a, a motor home that kind of parks around in different places. And you see, you see them and, you know, they're doing their homeless thing, uh, acting busy, acting like they're fixing things or counting their, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, but you, it's, it's nothing like, uh, like Seattle or uh, it's just, you know, not that intensity of people. I don't know if it's because uh, the great number of them don't, have uh, support, like uh, maybe the churches are not having spaghetti feeds on Wednesday or, you know, whatever attracts them. But uh, I don't have a way to solve it. Um, if you could get people the services they need, uh, some of these guys are like, they just like the lifestyle. They don't want to live in a house. They want to live out in the open. That's, that's their choice in life. Um, unless they're committing some sort of a crime, unless they're a threat to themselves or somebody else, uh, there's not too much you can do about it. Thank you. And then the next question to, to Pat, and then we'll go back to Barry. Um, I'll kind of put the two together. What part of Sumner has the most opportunity to grow economically? And if you were to start a business today in Sumner, what would it be? Okay, so I think that there are lots of businesses and opportunities in the east side of Sumner, but I don't see the same thing in the west on the west side of Sumner. I know that there's a car dealership there and warehouses, but I believe that there could be definitely more diversity on the west side of, um, of Sumner. And as far as a business, I actually would be interested maybe in a nonprofit that provides um, that helps in um help citizens um, complete legal forms. I'm a paralegal and one of the things that I have noticed is that people need help in completing legal forms, whether it's immigration, um, divorce proceedings, or even a name change form, something as simple as that. You don't wanna have to go and go to an attorney for that. I think that you can have a nonprofit organization that would help folks do that. Thank you. Thank you, and Barry, what part of uh, Sumner has the most opportunity to grow economically? And if you were to start a business today, what would it be? I think it's right around the uh, train station. There's going to be a multi apartment complex there. And on the base, there's going to be uh, businesses on the uh, ground floor. I would open up a, like a personal concierge type of business where people on their way to the train would stop in and say, um, here's, here's my laundry. Can you get it done by the time I get back? Um, here's a grocery list. Can I get a bag of groceries when I go home? Can I have a hot pizza when I'm, when I'm on my way home? Uh, my daughter's birthday is today and I don't have time to stop because I'm riding the train. Can you go get her a gift? Here's what she wants. That sort of a business, a real kind of Uber service, service business, really, for people who are commuting. I like that. Um, and then the last one, I'll start with Barry, then we'll move uh, back to Pat. But uh, 
one issue you'd push for in the next four years if elected to the city council? I, like I've said before, it would be the complete the trail from uh, Sumner to Ordy. And it's um, a worthwhile project. Yes. And Pat, what would your uh, one issue in the next four years if elected to the city council? Overall transportation infrastructure. We need bus service. There is a pedestrian bridge coming at some point once we get funding for people to get from where I live to Sumner Station easily. And we're working on sidewalks. We need to continue with the transportation infrastructure so that we make improvements. For, and, and then it helps us get more business here in Seattle from, from neighboring um, cities. Thank you. And that completes my questions. And I'll hand it back to Tara. Fantastic. You know, I'm noticing you've got a, a real mainstay in Puyallup who uh, has owned several businesses. Rick Hansen has a question. So I'll just throw a little freebie out to anyone who would like to answer on his question. And I understand why he would be asking this. Um, what can be done to make it safe for employees and clients when dealing with blatant theft in retail shops and grocery stores? Again, it's a freebie. I'd like to tackle that one for Sumner. Um, I really think we, our police force is just sort of short staffed in my opinion. And if we were to increase our police force, we could have better response times or they can actually be there to kind of, to help citizens when they are in need of those kinds of services. Great, thanks for chiming in. Anyone else have anything to add? All right, big questions, big problems, and we so appreciate all of you rolling up your sleeves and swinging at this complex world we live in, right? So now we're going to uh, leave our last few questions. So we'll, we'll go back to our first race. So, um, you know, just think of any closing remarks. I'll throw a little curveball at you and also a little fun and ask you to name your favorite Disney character. We've done that on our uh, Facebook Live candidate interviews, and, and I feel like I really get to know who you are <laughs> with those answers. So um, let's start first with Joe Colombo. Thank you. You made me laugh with that with that Disney question. Um, so thank you. I wanted to uh, thank everyone once again uh, for holding this forum. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you today. Um, one of my key things that I want to do when elected to city council is to build connections with people in the community. Um, I love to learn to who to go to when I don't have an answer for something, who is the expert that I can go to, to get that information and, and learn what needs to be done so that I can help lead things forward and get projects completed. Um, as for my favorite Disney character, you know, the first one that comes to mind, I'm going to have to say is Buzz Lightyear, even though it's technically Pixar. <laughs> uh, uh, Buzz Lightyear is really, really one of my favorite characters. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we, we can uh, blur the lines with Disney there. We get it. Awesome. Awesome answer. Thank you again for being here. Appreciate it, Joe. All right. Off to Dennis. I apologize. I, I heard the Disney character part in your question originally, but I missed the last part. Your mic went out on my end. Oh, okay. So we have 30 seconds to leave us with whatever lasting remarks you like. If there's anything we may have missed or you want to touch upon. And then, yes, we would love to hear who your favorite Disney character is. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, again, I, I just want to thank you guys for holding this uh, forum for, for us all. And to be able to get our issues and, and platforms out there for everybody. Um, you know, safety is, is a big deal for me. And I think it's a big deal for a lot of folks in our city. Um, homeless service accountability, that's a big one. Um, and, and real estate affordability uh, and really be able to allow folks to be able to own their own home at a reasonable price and a lot of the rates that they're paying in, in rental fees uh, can be applied to affordable real estate. And so I wanna be able to make sure that uh, is something that happens in our city. Um, and as far as a Disney character, man, my daughter is probably gonna punch me for this one, um, but 
you know, I would, I'd probably have to go with, uh, um, Hercules. Like it, like it a lot. Can you hear me better? I, I'm switching around microphones. Okay. Yes, I can hear you better now. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that. All right. Excellent. Excellent answers. We love it. All right. We're going we're gonna to roll now to Kirk Hartke. I will mention um, we did invite his opponent, opponent. He does have an opponent in his race as well. That's Earl Stewart, um, who did decline participating today. So I'll just mention um, that to put it on your radar, that there are two, two folks running in this position. So Kirk, thanks for being here today. Absolutely. And I really appreciate the chamber for having me and having all of us to give us an opportunity to be heard. I think that uh, uh, it's important to, you know, be able to voice, our, you know, your concerns to us and us, you know, channel back our thoughts to you and uh, as candidates. And really thank you so much. I hope to, uh, you know, represent, you know, Sumner families that are, you know, people that are raising families in Sumner, be that voice. I'd like to, you know, I think I'm going to be a great, uh, well-rounded perspective of transportation concerns in Sumner. I think I'll work as a, you know, great conduit of public safety concerns for our citizenry. And uh, I just, uh, you know, truly appreciate the opportunity for you guys to hear me out and uh, look forward to being part of the, the future of Sumner City Council. Oh, <laughs> Disney character. Sorry. Okay. Yes, I have to. So, just because it's the only Disney apparel that I I consistently wear, uh, from I have a uh, uh, Mickey as a pirate on a pirate ship. So the pirate Mickey. <laughs> pirate Mickey. I love it. I love it. Love it. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Let's go now to uh, Pat Cole. Hi. Um, so I want to say that as a city council member, I know that I am the most qualified person in this particular position for position number two. I have the right background. I know a lot about budgeting. I know a lot about land use issues. It would be so easy for me to just come into the council and be ready to go on day one. Um, with a tiny bit of training, but not a whole lot. So I think that that was um, really sort of get things moving without having any slowdowns for, you know, a ton of study sessions. So I love the city of Sumner. I love living here. I've been here four and a half years. I'm going to be here a whole lot longer than four and a half years more. And I really would love my that just an opportunity to be on the city council. As far as a Disney character, I would choose Goofy. I was actually at Disneyland all week last week with my grandchildren, and we had we were did a dining with the characters um, breakfast. And Goofy was a star of the show. Really had my grandkids laughing and just having a grand old time. So I choose to be Goofy. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Great answers. Okay, take us on home, Mr. Barry Walden. <laughs> well, I think I'm the best candidate for uh, the position because I know a lot, but I don't know it all. And I depend on subject matter experts in order to uh, guide my vote on what should happen. I also use evidence to guide my vote. Also, people who are telling the truth a lot. And because of my background in investigations and in, in uh, interviewing people, I have a really good spider sense on who's blowing smoke and who's not. Um, I have to uh, tell you a, a little bit about where I grew up. I grew up in Anaheim, California. I grew up in the shadow of the Matterhorn. I've been to Disneyland so many times, I can't count them all. My favorite character is Captain Hook. <laughs> wow. How did I know that was going to be a case? You next door neighbor with all Disney. Yeah. See, I'm Disneyland old school. You are old school. No, that's fantastic. We really appreciate Hey, clever answers. Um, obviously, again, it just takes so much to even add your name to the ballot. And um, I did it myself 
Um, apparently Tacoma wasn't ready for me, uh, but it was by far the best experience I've ever had. So I hope you are finding this experience, whatever your outcome, um, to be worthwhile and something that will definitely imprint on you for the rest of your lives. Um, again, thank you so much to Luke Cora, who I think just did such a great job with very uh, telling questions and very uh, you know, timely questions for, for what we're going through and grappling with in our great cities. Uh, thank you so much for the candidates to uh, open up and be vulnerable today and, and share us, you know, let us glean a little insight of where you're coming from. Um, you've got some difficult decisions out there, voters. Uh, but again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. And yes, for logging on. Hey, it, um, you know, it, it, it means something to have an audience that cares. And obviously you have demonstrated by logging on today. Uh, we have recorded this show, so we will be sure to push it out to our other 1,500 um, subscribers to our Chamber Chatter. So you will be heard. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it.